but uh, the, the, the kind of uh, uh, photography that the three-eyed camera could do with Cinerama was uh, really so uh, breathtaking, as Mrs. Lowell Thomas put when she was here just recently to see Seven Wonders of the World and had never had a chance to see that film because she was Lowell's uh, second wife. And by that time, which, and when she married him, well, you know, the Cinerama theaters were closed up, you know, gone. And uh, so she saw it for the first time here. The thing that was an improvement on the Cinerama camera, which Cinerama did something about, was the use of the Cinemerico process where a film called Windjammer uh, was made using a three-eyed camera, but in a different way. It was truly three cameras mounted on one uh, huge mount. But through the use of mirrors, they could do away with the problem of the intersect line as far as if you get too, too far away from the camera and a person walks through the intersect line, they can actually disappear momentarily and come back out as they go from one screen to the other. So that was the only, uh, the main disadvantage uh, of the person using a Cinerama camera. They had to keep that in mind because, uh, and they didn't. You'll see certain scenes uh, in How the West was one because what you had now is the Cinerama camera born in New York and used successfully in the first five films being in the hands of Hollywood cameramen who wanted to take the attitude, hey, I know how to run a camera, you know, don't tell me, when the advisor was there to warn them of certain things not to do with the Cinerama camera. And those things could have been, you know, you know uh, left out, or uh, that mistake could not have been made had they listened. But that's what happens when somebody who didn't work with it originally uh, takes over and they figure, well, what's a camera's a camera, right? No, it's not. It's, it's knowing how to use it to get the best photography with it. And every camera, every camera has certain things you gotta think about uh, in how you use it so that uh, it's used properly and get the best results. Uh, yes? Who does own these films now? Who owns the rights to the Cinerama films now? Well, uh, from the check that I made, uh, of the first five films, the, the actual rights to this film are still retained by Cinerama in uh, Los Angeles. Uh, it, Cinerama is owned by Pacific Theaters. And they uh, are in a strange position in that they only retained, did not renew any rights except on this is Cinerama. They have the rights to that film and the Cinerama logo. Now the other four films that were made in New York, the travel type films, uh, went into uh, public domain. And I even had a list of, of some people who uh, you know, had bought the, uh, the rights or whatever. I've never have had any one of those persons uh, in my search uh, in Washington come up to me and say, hey, I'm the guy that, that bought the rights to uh, whatever film, like Seven Wonders of the World, that Cinerama had let go. So uh, the, the, the tricky part is though, if you're gonna make a new print, you gotta add the negatives. So Pacific Theaters, though, owns all the negatives. So if anybody was going to do anything, they have to do it through the direction and, and what is desired by Pacific Theaters if they're gonna make the use of those negatives. Are the negatives in good shape? Well, I've been working like I did for the soundtracks to <coughs> uh, re-record it uh, in time because they were shrinking and, and going into warpage as well. Uh, what I'm trying to say is what they should be listening to me about right now is I don't want to hear, yeah, you have all the negatives. I want to hear that you hired somebody to go through those negatives, whether you're going to make a print or not, and see if they're complete and if they're usable. But they, they haven't even done that. And I, you know, uh, would think from what they saw in the way of interest for Cinerama that's been generated here in Seattle and in England, and uh, uh, those kinds of things uh, on the internet you punch in Cinerama now, there's all kinds of information and people interested in knowing about it and are finding out about it through all the input of information that's existing there. Uh, just a minute, somebody did, behind you. Do they have plans with the Pacific Theater for, for doing something with Cinerama? Uh, is there any plans for them? Uh, I'm not, so not the Cinerama Dome. Probably. Oh yeah, uh, the, the Cinerama Dome uh, right now is being uh, uh, worked on <coughs> They're uh, making a lot of changes, uh, not architecturally. I mean, it'd still be a dome and all that. But 
they intend uh, to put Cinerama in to the Cinerama Dome in uh, about a year, a little over a year from now. And what was strange was uh, they, they had the projection equipment saved from the Forum Studio that was in Los Angeles. And that equipment was recently, for the first time, carried into the Cinerama Dome. But then when the construction began, or reconstruction of things, uh, including asbestos treatment, well, they decided to take the equipment out of there so that nothing got damaged and, and took it over to the original Cinerama Theater before the dome was built. A theater that's been closed for a long time. And those projectors are going to be set up there not in true Cinerama uh, form, other than they'll be on a slightly curved screen, uh, where they can, if they do make, start making new prints, at least they can compare the quality of the work coming from the lab right there in Los Angeles and not send them to me in Dayton, Ohio, like they did when they made the new print for uh, England. Yeah. Okay. Pass it a little on note when you talk about looking through the internet for Cinerama. Yes. I discovered there's a rock band in England called Cinerama. A rock band, huh? Yeah. All right. right. <laughs> <laughs> it still has its uh, its uh, ramifications. Huh? Yes, sir. Uh, John, because uh, I've been looking for 30 years for this, and I just wanted to see the CPSSI will still continue, right? That's right. Okay. Now, what can we, in general, as I said, I think we're over the hump. There's a lot of interest because I have to tell you. All of us can realistically in general to keep this ball rolling. I know Paul Allen, Seattle, give them the input, and, and uh, I tried calling to see the theaters, but I haven't gotten through the right people. How can we keep this ball rolling? Well, like I say, the next my my next plan is to uh, conduct my own letter writing campaign like Larry Smith did here. In other words, we had to convince the people who owned the building that we could even put the center in here. Uh, because they, they were questioning, you know, what, if it would do any business at all. So Larry uh, asked them, you know, what it would take to convince them, and they said, well, he said, uh, if I, you know, get a letter writing campaign and tell people, you know, that we could put Center Ham into the neon, would you come and see it if we do? How many letters would it take to convince you? And they said, you know, a thousand or whatever. So they, he got fourteen hundred, real quick like, <laughs> and so we put it in. Uh, and we had like uh, less than 30 days to get all this installed. And then from that time on, we never knew how much business was going to be forthcoming all the time. It was really a, such a delight <coughs> to see the kind of audiences that first year of the type that we have here today. You know. And uh, <coughs> what happened was we didn't know the longevity of it. So uh, if we, uh, we didn't want to uh, for instance, the way the, the ceiling <coughs> is, is ended here, we t ended it so we could get the picture to the screen that we wanted to put in. Uh, if I knew we were going to be here a year ago, you know, I would like to, you know, had a nice uh, ceiling that ends in a curve as it should be with lights around the curtain and a new new curtain and all that. <coughs> but if you dump all that money in and the next thing you know, the, you know, the owner of the building says, well, I want you out of here, and then you spend all that money. And we were going kind of like on a show-to-show -show basis after a while, you know, particularly in the last year. John, do you have any uh, <coughs> guesstimates on what the total attendance has been at these shows? Uh, Larry Smith would. <coughs> I, I know he was <coughs> talking about a figure uh, of almost 30,000 who had come here. And that, for a 188-seat theater, uh, is pretty amazing. <laughs> uh -huh. Oh, yes. Was he the one that was depicted That's in right. Lawrence of Arabia as well, the reporter? As a, yeah. yeah. In, the, in the film. Lowell Thomas. Was he the one that was depicted in Lawrence of Arabia as the reporter right. chasing had after a, him? Had a cameraman yeah. depicted in Lawrence of Arabia. But truly, that's why Lowell uh, wrote what he did about Lawrence, because he was a, a newspaper man or a newsman that actually lived with Lawrence for a while. while uh, the crusade was being uh, held. And that's why he was uh, really on top of truly knowing what was happening there and the things that Lawrence Arabia was doing. So that was one of his 
lots of things to talk about. I just want to ask more. Get to you next. Yes, sir. Uh, are, there, are there prints of all seven films somewhere in the world? Are there what? Are there prints of all seven of the original <coughs> films somewhere? Well, there was a good friend of mine in uh, Australia uh, that had all the prints. Uh, but, uh, and I have, I've never been down under, but uh, maybe the temperature, climate, or whatever had led to a lot of his prints uh, very early in the game, I felt, uh, going uh, into rock. In other words, uh, they shrunk. We be became unrunnable. But he does have a, a print of Brothers Grimm that I'd love you know, to work out something with him to be able to show that wherever I get to show it next. Uh, Larry? Okay. Maybe just one more question. Oh, okay. Uh, what, where, where did you get the screen and, uh, and the curtain? Oh, the screen and the curtain? The curtain uh, is the original curtain that was here, and we just moved it forward uh, and then added some black on the on the end uh, to have enough to cover the larger <coughs> screen. And the, uh, the but the uh, uh, actual surface of the screen itself, the louver screen, came from England because when I went to England to install Cinerama, it would, for the people of Europe, would be the first time since 1967 that Cinerama had been seen you know, across the water. And so when I arrived there, and my friend from Holland, who I was working with as well, uh, found out that the young man who had, had accepted this screen from a theater in Belgium that was, it was never put up, uh, he was quite proud of the fact that he, he got the screen for free. You know, but when we unrolled the, the roll, because it's made up of louvers, uh, the, the length of the roll is the height of the picture. And it was way short of the area that they had on their stage where they wanted me to put in Cinerama. So I said, uh, and Will, my friend from Holland, agreed right away, we're not gonna put this screen in. You know, if we're gonna do this, we're gonna write it and have the, the biggest screen you can get in this auditorium. And uh, they said, well, you know, where, where we get one? You know, and I said, well, I think they still make them. We'll have to call America and find out. The Hurley Screen Company made the screens for Cinerama. So we did that call, and sure enough, they said they would do it. So for the 30 days I was over there to finish up the installation, I waited for that screen to come. And then when it did, well, Willem and I, you know, got together and did everything necessary to get it up there so we could have our proper test before we, uh, you know, left there. Then he said, what, you know, why don't you give John Harvey the screen that you can't use because he's got it in his home and maybe he might want to put in a, an authentic ribbon screen. And they said, well, why not? Because it's no use to us. It's not high enough. We can't use it you know, as a replacement for their bigger screen. So they gave it to me. And it sat in my garage uh, after they shipped it to me, uh, you know, for months and months until Larry came and said, hey, how about putting Cinerama at the Neon Movies? <coughs> and at that point, I was ready to go. When he'd asked me before, I said no, but only because uh, the uh, thing hadn't happened in England. Once the Cinerama in California said, England, you can do it, I said, wait a minute. I got no problem with them now, I know, to have it in America because it's an American invention and I, you know, I would not let up on them in that case. Well, uh, I hate to tell you, but uh, I had to call this to a close. Once again, for anybody who's coming back uh, tomorrow, uh, be welcome to welcome in the same faces, I hope. And uh, if you've never seen Center on the Holiday, while well, you're in for a treat in seeing what they did in that second film. Even though it's pink, got a new soundtrack, we'll love it. Okay.